that they are two of the best players on this game here today. All right, well, here we go. And they're just going to lift right over to that sniper tower there and force him all the way back. Immediately, though, you're going to get that first kill out of there. And Woo! already we're just seeing some spikes thrown down there, Dan. Yeah, and you just got to make sure you get that early statement in right from the get-go. Let them know who's boss. Make sure you don't allow them to get away with a sniper rifle. We see straight away Master Fear wants to get this camouflage, but good Ooh. grenades and good game sense to make sure that's not an easy grab. Gabriel's going to get the beat down there. Camo is going to be in his hands as well. And, you know, I, I, we were talking about this in the back a little bit, right? In that last game with Roy and, and, and Flamesword, that there, there are a lot of people out there enjoying some Halo 3. And for a lot of these players, I don't think that they could have thought that that was a possibility to play Halo 3 in front of this crowd. If I'm nervous back here as a caster, I cannot even imagine what these players are feeling right now as they take this stage to compete. You, you have to be a little nervous here. There's no way that you're not just a teensy bit nervous. I man. mean, I heard what Flamesword said. He was saying, I'm more than happy to go up against any of these kids on a loud environment on a main stage. I've been here, they haven't. And you saw the difference in that last game, but now it's time for some oh. of these players to make their name. Yeah, that was actually a good push into the Snipe Tower. And really, the battle has been going on over there so much. Four to three in the current score line here. Two, these are four players that have simply just not stopped playing Halo 3 this whole time, putting in the work. Now on the main stage, and the action is going to slow down. We have a player by blue. And they're just trying to feel each other out here, seeing what the push is going to be now, Dan. And of course, in 2v2, because it's only to 25, you have got to be a little bit more hesitant with your yeah. pushes. Master Fury is kind of hovering around this sniper area because it should be up in around 45 seconds. Camo should be a similar time, to be honest. So it's it's which you choose. Are you more of a camouflage kind of player, more of a sniper kind of player? Both can influence the game very differently. Tied matchup here. Still early on. Master Fury playing around by green, just not really trying to, to get a little too ambitious. And his teammate comes off the spawn, but that was you got to be careful, right? Not to not to give up too many dumb deaths, right? Give them too many of those garbage kills. But the push comes through. Nice play there as they're able to go and get that gold lift. Really nice push there from Master Fear as well. Of course, he baits the player out, uses the noise of the lift, and then tells his teammate, push now. They're going to be looking at me. Master Fear he gets the camera. Oh. oh, he tried to stay alive. He ducked as well. Uh, but decent shots coming out from all of these guys. I'm in incredibly impressed with their aim. And you heard that sniper was just grabbed over by S3. And Gabriel now is going to be on the move. Bot half shield pushes right in, able to take out one player. Master Fear, another one. That's going to be a double kill. Locking that one down. Sniper in hand, and he's going to have eyes, but just got to be careful. And it's Halo 3. You need eyes and you need ears. So much is about awareness in this game. And the sniper skill is absolutely incredible from these guys as well. I cannot stress enough how impressive a headshot is in Halo 3. You've got to be aware that someone could be pushing from behind you. They could be jumping up from Gold 1 to Gold 2. But Gabriel, he's got a good sense of knowing that they're over at that sniper tower. And that's why he's kind of just hovering around, hoping someone walks into that crosshair. Never quite know where the push is going to come. But these players have been playing not only Halo 3, but also against each other, right? Like these are guys that are just matching up against one another in matchmaking time and time again. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, a lot of debts to settle here, as it is very different when it comes to LAN. Halo 3 is one of those games where I've seen players achieve so much online, and then it comes to LAN and it all falls to pieces. And, and, and that is the fear, right? You, you, you talked a big game, you felt like that this was going to be your moment, and then you, you arrive and it all falls apart. Master Fear, though, having to bait, bail out of that one. He is going to have some help as well, but they're going to be pinned inside of here. Luckily for them, they will have a sniper with four shots in it. Make that three. Does he connect with that one? Yes, he does. Nice shot there, taking out Fantasy. Another player looking to push up. He doesn't have the help, though. So you're just going to have to peel back for the time being. Camouflage should be coming up in about 10 seconds as well. So you can see one time here are moving their way over just to make sure they have a good angle on it. But every player here knows that camouflage is coming up. As long as they're timing it successfully, of course, no coaches here in the 2v2, so they will be timing it themselves. One thing I've noticed, which is very different in this game as to the prior semi-final Golden Boy, is they're not looking at each other's screens Ooh. as much. 
as the two X pros of Flame Sword, etc. I saw, I saw a little changed. glimmer from Master Fear, just 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 a tad. Oh yeah, they're, they're but, but I, I, but you're right though, right? Because these players they've been playing this game online for such a long time, whereas Roy and Flame Sword pretty much exclusively played on the main stage at MLG events all across the country. So yes, there, there is that inherent like expertise that they have of knowing. Okay, let me go ahead and look at my teammate. Let me see where he is and see how can I coordinate this push. But they're gonna they're gonna get into that groove little by little. New sniper is gonna be picked up. A tusk is gonna be dealt with quickly there. Yeah, you gotta make sure you take that sniper down as soon as you can. Of course, you do get de-scoped if you get shot with a sniper rifle. Very different to Halo 5 that we've been seeing earlier on today. Oh, yeah, and body that is shot. a nice body shot onto Gabriel. Ah, uh, but he wasn't able to finish up the kill in the mid, and you have a player that's gonna be jumping up. I think that was a stick. He does get the stick on to Tusk, but there is gonna be a trade there. Good news for them, though. Red team up 14-11 currently. Yeah, a little tussle over there, and Gabriel didn't really have any vision on it, so he couldn't really support to keep his teammate alive. Knows where that player is going to be located. And a beautiful nade, but you know, you're not going to really be able to push that advantage because you're not going to have the knowledge that you landed the nade, right? And that's the other thing, too. Just getting the visual cue that that this person's one shot. There's no, uh, there's no hit marker, right, to tell you that this person's one shot. As I said, you've got to use your eyes and your ears, just that little bit extra when we go back to Halo 3. I'm glad the Mauler was picked up. I was wondering when it would start going to make a bit more nice of an appearance. Shot. There's some decent shots coming out from Gabriel here. And they're making this move over here because they want to start playing for that camo. Get that prime positioning. See those nades starting to sail on through as well. If a player tries to jump, maybe Gabriel can just beam him as he jumps through, but he's actually just going to bail out of that one. I think it's just a sensible play. It's quite a defensive play, keeping that sniper rifle, just getting away from the camouflage. Yep. And this works out quite nicely because he was able to get a better angle. Go for those nerdy angles that we all remember. I'm sure many a, ma a man or woman in the crowd could go back and say, oh, I could stand anywhere on Guardian and I would know exactly the angles I can snipe someone from. Master Fear with this camouflage needs to make the play. They're only two kills down. Fantasy's going to be right in front of him. He's just going to have to go ahead and throw that nade out. Sends that player sailing through the air, and his squad member is going to be right behind. Should be able to clean that one up, and that is going to tie this match up 16-16. Yeah, one time doing well here. They've got a sniper rifle in their hands, and another sniper should be spawning as well shortly. Look at these angles, man. Just waiting. Just predicting. And it's horrible when you pop out of blue, and you know someone's got a sniper in green as well, because it's so difficult to hit those BR shots. Of course, it's oh. far more comfortable on land when those shots do connect. Nice nade sailing him up in the sky, but Tusk is actually going to have to bail. And he, oh, man, for a moment he was going to get hit by the splash of that nade, but instead he's going to get cleaned up by the battle rifle. Fantasy, though, right by S3 now. Sniper is going to be up, and he gets it, and he's out of there. Yeah, you bail quickly. You don't want to give any opportunity for grenades to be backed off walls and take you down, even get you down to low shields to allow a push to happen. Elsewhere, Gabriel gets a kill with a mauler as well. He's doing work. He's more than happy to take that push. You can see Fantasy just trying to line this one up, but he's also very conscious that someone could be spawning gold as well. I think that was an accident. Either that or it was a very a good <laughs> or it was just the most, like, big brain play you could possibly imagine. Hoping to bank a shot off the wall. <laughs> yeah, right. That would have been crazy. This next camo should be coming up in a couple seconds here. And that's what Fantasy's looking out for. They also have two snipes as well. Ah, oh, gets that player one shot, and here it goes. Camo's going to be up, and it is going to be grabbed. Tusk runs out of there. Is there any connection from his teammate? I don't quite think so, but he sees it. Sees him flickering. He's going to chase it down, but Master Fear is going to be Woo! there for the assistance, and that's going to be the assassination. Still, though, they maintain the lead 19-17, but they have the camo. Can one time do this. And that was such a brave play by Tusk as well, just diving on that camouflage, even knowing there was two sniper rifles potentially looking at him. And this is a chance for one time to get straight back into this game if he can find the skill on Gabriel. But Gabriel's going to stick his head down, make it harder to hit that head by just showing the back. And they do keep the one kill advantage. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in this game. We got a player, bottom mid. Oh boy, this is where the, this is where the tension starts to build up for all four of these players. The action, it's close. This has been a hotly contested game, even matchup. And I think we'll see one more sniper spawn before the end of the game as well, probably in about 
20 to 30 seconds. And that could swing the game in the favour of either of these players. There will also be another camouflage, of course. We saw how much it's just impacted the play in the last minute or so. And one time have that camouflage advantage at the moment. But because of this man cannon right there, it means you can so quickly push over to that camouflage, even though you do leave yourself slightly vulnerable because you are just floating in the air. Fantasy playing back here. Everyone's at this point, you're, you're just playing for the power. You're playing for the power weapons, right? That's what this is all about. That's why the action has slowed down. If anyone's like, well, why aren't they pushing? I want to see I want to see some BRs firing. Well, it's because you got to be smarter than that. You have to think about your approaches in Halo 3. If you kind of find yourself in a bad situation, you don't have many options to get out of there. But a big assassination on to Master Fear as Gabriel finds a player just pinned. And that is going to be tossed with the kill there, and that will be the red member down. So still within one. Oh, just when you think that an opportunity is going to open up. Well, was, come right back. It was such a smart play from Gabriel as well. He saw that Sniper was up. He knew they'd be looking at the Sniper rifle, looking at Fantasy. Fantasy baited it. And Tusk has got another camouflage as well. Oh. This is his second camouflage. Dear. How? One if that was me, it would have stuck onto my big toe. That's not fair. They hear him lifting up. Gabriel's going to be one shot. He has a teammate there. He's able to take one out. Oh, the mauler. But they're able. No, he runs away. Did he get him? He's low. He's looking around. Bails out. Still one kill. Oh, my word. We got 41 seconds left in this game, Gaskin. That no scope was absolutely huge from Fantasy. And he's been able to escape with a sniper rifle as well. You can see he's scouting around. He's looking for spawns. Needs oh. to be careful here. Needs to stay alive with only 30 seconds left. But he's being pushed from both angles. He got pushed. He got pushed, but he's able to trade out. He's able to trade out, and his teammate gets the 23rd kill. 18 seconds remaining. And one time, it looked like they were going to win it one time, but not today. Seconds Game remaining. one is going to go to GMS. In five seconds, nothing that they can do, but what a conclusion to that Guardian matchup. And quite rightly, a round of applause as well from the audience because that was a treat. The power-up control, the snipe control, the risks that people took to get that camouflage, to get those sniper rifles. I can just imagine... That the was parts. a clutch trade over a grass, man. Well, the fact he went round to root and then he was able to get that beat yeah. down was absolutely insane. He was on no shields being pushed by two players. To get away with that, incredible. Wow. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> You got chills? I'm, I'm having I'm, I'm having the time of my life, man. I'm like a kid in a candy store. And I don't know if you can tell, but I definitely don't need more candy. No, you know? that's about it. But, but I'm, 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 I'm eating it up right now, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm consuming it all, the Halo 3 goodness. You know what I mean, Poppy? It's been I good. Know. It's so good. It's, uh, it's bringing back, I'm sure, so much memories for everyone watching around the world, yeah. whether it's on Twitch, Mixer, or here live in the audience at DreamHack Atlanta. And I think we're just getting started in this series as well, because I think there is more to offer from these four players, because that one was so, so close. Now, interesting little bit here. I just want to throw it out. So the reason why the game's ending is because they started so quickly. They were, they were so ready to get into game two that they just joined lobby and they were in. They were, they were gone. I remember uh, when I was uh, commentating MCC tournaments back in H2A, took a little bit longer to get into the game. So, you know, respect these players. And the, the beautiful thing about Halo 3 MCC, we've got full-on real LAN, local yes. area network. And it's just beautiful yes, seeing the shots connect. I mean, I remember playing online back in the day and it was just, yeah, no, especially, you'd shoot things. It especially because you're playing out of Europe, you know, and you guys basically have wooden internet. We do, we did back then. Yeah. If, if a person had fiber, we would be like, hey, come, like, come into my lobby, host, please. Host for me. I want to be able to shoot things. <laughs> I don't want to be lagging across the map. You guys have like a, a DSL, you know, just a little phone. I had AOL dial-up. <laughs> yes. You'd start Halo and be like, and then you're ready to go. Oh, that's a, I, we dated ourselves, buddy. Just saying. We, we, we quite dated ourselves. Here we go. Time to jump into some Narrows fun here. And we got a, a, an interesting matchup because as it currently stands, GMS coming out clutch at the end there one time. They got to shake themselves out of that one. It was such a close game. And right now, they're up 2-0. to zero, And they have some sniper control up top. And they're just wiping them away. That's four. And this map is all about sniper control. Narrows, of course, long Ooh. and, funnily enough, very narrow. 
There is going to be a lot of angles to get those snipe shots. Against a lot of potential name. for spawn uh, killing as well. We saw uh, Flamesword almost get a triple kill in the previous semi-final. Because if you can get two down, as long oh. as you look at those spawns and you're hitting your shots, don't you're in for your a head. Don't poke your head. You don't want to do that. 6-0, Dan. 6-0. 6-0 and you're spawning and just staring at sniper rifles as well. Going across the man cannon is brave, but no shot is going to be hit today. That wasn't a straight montage. You're going, oh, he gets the stick, though. He gets the stick, keeps this one pretty far away from the red team, GMS. Even when they get a kill, one is answered right back, so they're still maintaining that lead. Such a strong start for one time. You know, GMS, they can turn this around quite quickly. They've got the top sure. middle control now. If they can get some sniper rifles in their back pockets a little bit later on, quite easy to turn these games around. They're just hovering around this R3 and L3, or R1 and L1, depending on which side you are. Just hoping to be able to pick out a couple of players. Looking around here, and this is where the players were, were, were located currently, right? Opting actually to push out mid, so they, they kind of gave up that top mid control. And the thing that's beautiful, or what's beautiful about Halo 3, and still is, is the amount of jumps that are available to maneuver your way around that's the map. True. To surprise your opponent, get behind them. So you've got to be so aware of where you're pushing. A couple seconds here, you're going to have those sniper rifles in play. And you're not going to want to take those cheeky jumps there, Dan, or else you're going to be walking away without a face. Yeah, I think 25, both snipers are going to be up. So in about 10 seconds, and there's still that six kill lead from those original sniper rifles that came mm -hmm. up at the start of the game. They were only able to get one to the, the, the two that one time were able to bring back in. So they're right. They're, they're keeping this one far away from GMS, not letting them get comfortable at all with this sniper rifle. Look for Tusk to do what they did, do what he did, I should say, at the start of this game. He's Master Fear. Master Fear is handling business, and no one's trying to expose themselves. Fantasy, wisely enough, not pushing forward here because he knew that they were going to have eyes on him. And sniper rifle players were so important during Halo 3 as well, especially in maps like Naros, where there are two snipers needed to get snipe offs. Can't quite connect Ooh. that headshot onto Gabriel, though. He had the gun in hand. He was not able to drop it. There was just too much he was getting fired at. And at that moment, you kind of have to make a play. He had the sniper hoping that he can get that no-scope headshot. Just was not to be. Now GMS gained the sniper. They have the rockets, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to shoot the floor. Good enough, though. Still it, able to get at least one. It certainly works. I'll allow it. And then, whoa, somehow gets what, the what? stick as well. I mean, sticky grenades have always been something that bewilder me since the start of Halo 3. Yeah, whenever I would toss one, it would go straight to Australia, hit Miles right in the face. <laughs> but never the person I'm, I'm playing against. All right, there goes Tusk in front. He's going to be one shot. Gabriel just wisely enough playing around the mid, not exposing. But, oh, he did get the trade, though, but his teammate was there for the follow-up. So they're still going to have that top mid waiting for the spawn to come here is Master Fear. But GMS, they've closed this gap a little bit. Three kills is not that significant when it is only first to 25, and that's some decent BR shots from Fantasy as well. Closing this one up now to just two. They've got to be very aware, though, of where this sniper rifle is. And this is a credit to GMS for coming back like this, yeah. right? They were down by five kills at one point, and that lead just kept on building. But you have this, this team that, based on what we saw in that Guardian game, they're able to dig deep. They're able to bring it back when they need to. One time, though, applying the pressure. Fantasy won't be able to get away from that one as he's picked off. And they're just looking for the spawns. Player's going to challenge top mid. Quick work out of him as Gabriel gets the hands. And one of the snipers should be coming up about 645, 655. I think one of the other snipers might be dirtied as well. Uh, that meaning that someone picked it up as it was spawning. So the time changes ever so slightly, and it's difficult to track unless you are that player or a coach stood behind them. Which they don't have. Which they do not have, no. They do not have the coaching. Coaches were such a huge part of Halo 3 as well. But when you talk about 2v2, though, right, you, you should be able to have a more of a conversation as you're playing the game. Less clutter in the comms. Or at least that's the theory. Well, there's less objective to worry about. The objective in a 2v2 is power-up timing. Mm -hmm. Is power weapon timing. Of course, a coach would help, but yeah, you'd like to think that these players know how to do it. would be a little excessive for a 2v2. <laughs> no, no. I'll take any help I can get, GB. I... Preach to the choir, baby. 
and, and, and Clutch is up there, he'll probably tell you. Oh! Oh! What was that? The double kill from Fantasy! Oh! <laughs> oh! Holy! Keep it going, Papa! Keep it going! Oh, man! What a play from Fantasy! GMS, they were down. They were down by six. And now Fantasy is really turning up and the Rockets are spawning as well. Drops that sniper rifle, is running out of bullets. Does see Tusk coming around that corner and Master Fear. I think he got both of those players down to no shields. He needs to be communicating that with his teammates ASAP. Can you, can you imagine Fantasy right now? He's on the main stage here in Atlanta, playing Halo 3, something that I'm sure he thought he would never do. He pulls off some incredible plays to bring his team back into the game. That is literally the dream. That body went flying, but it's okay, because they still have the lead. After one time, had such a dominant performance at the beginning of this game. I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that he hit that incredible double kill, or the fact that his hands weren't shaking oh, afterwards. Man. The amount of adrenaline that must be pumping through the bodies of these players now. Their chance to shine on a main stage in front of hundreds, thousands of people watching. Definitely and, thousands. And, and one time has to be struggling here, right? Because they they had this lead. You, you, you're comfortable at this point. And now you see that this is it, what you built up at the beginning. It, it's gone now, it doesn't matter anymore. You're fighting from the back foot. Oh, and Tusk. He didn't line it up, and that was gonna be a double kill. Another double kill for Fantasy. This kid is disgusting. Look at the players jumping off spawn though. They knew how vulnerable they were off the spawn there. If they had not jumped off spawn, they might have been hit by that headshot. But recognizing that Fantasy had that sniper rifle, so important. If they hadn't, they might have fallen even further behind. And of course now with a four kill lead for GMS after a pretty impressive display on Guardian as well. They're looking to try and rack up this series. Three kills remaining for GMS to tie this one up. He has his teammate there as well. He had to make the call out and Gabriel was able to get the kill on to Master Fear. That was the 23rd. They're looking around. Fantasy, he's hungry. Wants some headshots, but he's gonna have to bail out of this one. Popped up from behind. The very sniper's smart. gonna go out of this one as yep. well, Dan. Very smart to throw the sniper rifle off the map. Don't allow them an easy way back into the game. Make sure they have to wait for another one to spawn, perhaps. But one time, they are slowly creeping their way They're back They're not out of it. This. They're not out of it, Dan. They just need to be smart about this, work together, talk with one another, and not give up any dumb deaths. One thing I've noticed from one time is they're very brave players. They are not scared to make a push that leaves them vulnerable. They're confident in their shooting ability, confident in their knowledge of how to jump and maneuver around the map. And they're only two down, and it is only three minutes left as well. So they do still have plenty of time to work with. Three minutes and 2v2 is actually quite a lot of time. Oh, feels like an eternity. And Fantasy just, oh man. And that's what I was saying, like, I don't know why he pushed up and that's gonna do it. GMS are gonna lock it up. Good job out of the red team to secure that victory there. And, you know, they, they pushed up as a solo against two. Like, that's just not something you want to do on Narrows. His teammate was on the other side of the map. It's very unfortunate that that was the case. But still, GMS with that victory, hot off of the, the, the back of Fantasy. Just, he's living in a different world, bro. <laughs> I mean, Fantasy went 14 and 10. Like, it's so important to pick up those big kills. Clutch was saying it on the desk. He's the man you want to be watching when a sniper rifle comes into play. Narrows was literally where he was born and bred, it yeah. seems. Despite the fact they were down by, what, six kills at one point, the fact they were able to bring